The First Nation of Wata Mohawks is located approximately 8 kilometers from the town of Bala, Ontario, on the Muskoka Road No. 38, close to the intersection of Muskoka Road 38 and Highway 400 Interchange. The land is made up of forest and lakes, typical of the Canadian Shield. In many First Nation communities, there are stories and experiences among Indigenous people of hate and racism. Regardless if it was subtle or blatant, the darkness that is ever present from the days of first contact between our ancestors and the settlers to even as recent as 2023 has remained as an obstacle. Well, my name's Philip Franks. Um, I'm from here, Watamohawks. I've been the chief here for the past uh, nine years now and uh, been a resident pretty much all my life. My name is Evan Holmes. Uh, uh, Mohawk from here and uh, from Watamohawks. My name is Lori Strength Fenton. I'm a counselor for the Watamohawks and I am from Watamohawks. My name is Sky Care. I'm from Watamohawk Territory. I work here and I live here. What comes to mind when you hear the words hate or racism? Well, when you hear the words or even the actions hate or racism, what comes to my mind is, is somewhat sadness, I suppose, a little bit perplexing. I don't believe that in our, in our way that there's room for hate. We, not, we're not taught that. We're not taught to, to hate something. We're taught to be thankful for what we have. I think of uh, depression, um, maybe some mental health issues. Um, Especially, I think, with the kids as well, too. I got a son who's growing up who's having a little bit of a hard time in school right now, and he's getting a little bit bullied now and again, but definitely it kind of, I think, comes out at home afterwards, like, after the fact, right? And, um, yeah, I can really see it kind of, you know, yeah, through, through being at home and stuff, but. Hate is such a dark word to me. Um, I have envisions of bullyism and hate as I was growing up. So I just think dark, quiet silence, like a killer almost, a dark silent killer. Uncultured, people who don't understand nationalities or people who are different and try to degrade people because they don't understand it. Tell us about a time you've heard, seen, or experienced hate or racism. Oh, yeah, I've been around for quite a while. So I've seen a hate and more so racism um, from a very early age because uh, actually I was born in, in uh, Ganassadaga over on the Quebec side. And uh, even growing up amongst little kids, there were definitely French. Mohawk, poor relations, we'll put it. And I, I remember um, being ganged up on, and, and uh, if you did not, you did not want to be alone. A uh, group of kids, well, at one time they tried to drown me <laughs> until my brother came along. So yeah, and that was all based on, on racism that these kids didn't even understand but they were using the language, they were using the savage, and they were going on about those things, you know. So that's from the very first time I remember. And of course, throughout all the years, it exists. It exists all over. Um, definitely, I think in high school, uh, there was a bit of that. Um, you know, just the normal kind of growing up sort of stuff, right? Your friends are not natives and whatever, they might be a little I don't know, I think I'm maybe a little jealous sometimes, or just, uh, you know, not used to the way I kind of do things, I guess. And, uh, yeah, I may mean, just treat you a little bit differently, or, you know, definitely some name calling. And so, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in a small town south of Calgary, Alberta. Um, when I was growing up, I was considered a Mexican. And the only reason that I was there was because of the 60 scoop here. My parents went out west for a honeymoon and never came back. 
going to school, my best friends were Indigenous. I had a, I know her first name was Rhonda. I would protect her because she would get off the bus, they would rip off her jacket, or they would take her lunch, or they would take whatever book she had, and then they would run, and then they would throw them in the back 40s or in the back fields. And I would go to her and try and protect her. So then I would end up in the, in the principal's office because I was trying to defend her. Well, there was four or five kids that came from the reserve there off the bus, and it happened all the time, all the time, all the time. Well, I could only protect one. I had four friends there that I didn't know that I was connected with because I was Mexican and they were native. So that, it's always in my mind watching these kids get off that bus and getting beaten for their lunch, for their sweater, for their hat. And it was constant, it wasn't just one day, it was every day of the week. For three years I went through that. I haven't seen it personally, but I've heard stories of my friends that are just, Unbelievable, like you hear about it, but you don't think you'd actually like know anybody that it happened to. Um, my friend, um, he's African American and his house got vandalized with vulgar words on the side of their house in spray paint, which was really shocking. How does it make you feel when you see or hear about hate or racism? When I see racism, or hate, it makes me, uh, as I said, somewhat sad to see that because I know that it's based on just lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. And we've experienced it, uh, you know, through our time, I have anyway, and it's, there's, see, there's no real reason for it. There's no reason we should have that if people are, are knowledgeable and willing to um, understand other people. You know, like even here, there's a kind of analogy. Um, we got rattlesnakes, right? I'm not gonna say I love rattlesnakes, but I don't hate them either. I, I just understand, I can't trespass on their, on their territory or do something or they're going to hurt me. So it's, you know, people should realize that. Um, other people are not there to hurt them, per se. But for some reason, they have this belief that, uh, that maybe that's the case. It's a very, very big issue. Not good at all. I don't like it one bit. Um, yeah, I used to do a little bit of bullying myself when I was in school, for sure, now and again. And uh, I think now, growing up, I'm you know, definitely thinking, like, man, I shouldn't have said those kind of things or whatever else. But yeah, it's not a good feeling for sure, especially when it's coming towards you, I think. Um, you know, nothing that you really can do to stop people from saying it or see how things go, but um, yeah, I don't know. It'd just be nice if, uh, you know, everyone kind of get along a little better and uh, yeah, that's it. I want to get involved. I'd like to step in again when I was younger. I stepped in not knowing what I was doing, what I was trying to help. I was downtown Toronto, oh, three years ago with my girlfriend and we were going to, I think, a football game or something. And there was a bit of a kadafo. And I went to go and my girlfriend stopped me because she says, you don't know. You don't know if they have a gun, if they have a knife. And I said, yeah, but somebody's gotta do something. We just can't always just keep walking by and just watch somebody getting beaten up or getting robbed or whatever. So she stopped me and I don't know why I listened to her because I should have. I should have just, is everything okay? And then I could have walked away. But yeah, it makes me want to stop. If I see something going on, if I see fighting going on the street, I would probably go, hey, hey, hey stop it. Trying, I mean, nowadays you don't know with the knives and with the guns. So I would try and stop it myself. I would try and get involved. Sad, sad, because you think at this uh, time in life, people would come around more with how the world is developing. So it's, I mean, I know it's gonna happen, but it's sad. How can we move forward today for the sake of our future? Well, moving forward from here, I think we, we all have a role to play. And I do believe that it's coming about um, it's coming to uh, around more recently that 
people are starting to pay more attention and learn more about us. We, uh, in our council work, we are, um, we're at a table with municipal leaders in this area. And the whole purpose of that table is to sit down and understand each other's communities. We talk about our own problems in our own, whether it's one town or the other, or the First Nation. And we're getting to know each other. Um, and that hadn't happened in the past. So I think, you know, that's one kind of tiny step towards, towards alleviating things, but, but more so um, uh, the fact that media, social media, and, and communication means are so much greater now than they were, say, when I was a kid, that you can actually affect, hopefully, younger generations by having them understand um, what the realities are. People are not there to be hated. I think uh, just talking more with everybody and maybe there's some people I know for sure that kind of keep things in and don't want to, you know, express their feelings and how they're, how they're feeling. But I think just talking and, you know, even if it's not with somebody that you really know, it could be, you know, somebody that just, just whatever, even someone having from come to the community that's a complete stranger that, you know, you have to worry about what they're going to say afterwards or, you know what I mean? Like just, yeah, I think just maybe just talking to somebody and, Get your feelings out. Well, we gotta join hands. We gotta love yourself. You gotta love each other. You've, you've gotta say hello to your neighbors. I mean, I went to a, a neighborhood party the other day and everybody in that neighborhood said hello. I don't get that up here. I mean, I don't live, I don't have a close neighbor, but I mean, even coming here sometimes, we're now learning our Mohawk. So I'll say Sagon, Sagon, Sagon to everyone. People are looking at me like, what are you talking about? Just say hello. Let's let's not let it happen. I know I don't have the answer for that. I don't know how, how you can stop it, but just let's be genuine. Let's start loving ourselves and love each other and help each other. I think just with positivity, um, education, uh, just even if people still don't understand. We'll just take it with a grain of salt, you know, try and spread more love than hate. If we come together, I think that'll, we'll win in the end. It is our hope that the stories and experiences shared here in this video can help bring understanding, awareness, and education to those who do not realize the kind of hate and racism that Indigenous people have gone through. In order to move forward and forge a new relationship between nations, we must let go of these negative views and work together.